Hi there. In this video, we are going to go over understanding the father complex, also known as the father wound. My name is Christopher. My coaching business is Humble Fox Consultations, and let's get right into it. So I pulled from a couple of different sources, mainly Jung's Map of the Soul by Murray Stein, uh, Memories, Dreams, and Reflections, which is Jung's autobiography, and then Jacoby wrote this book called Complex Archetype Symbols in the Psychology of C.G. Jung, which I would also recommend checking out as well. And I, would, I wanted to give a shout out to my professor, Jorge De La O, um, who's a Jungian analyst at Pacific Graduate Institute, because a lot of this information also comes from his class as well. Um, all those book links are in the description below if you would like to check that out. So Jung starts us off with a little quote here. He says, everyone nowadays knows, everyone knows nowadays that people have complexes. What is not so well known is that complexes can have us. And we'll be kind of diving into that, but that whole idea of a complex sort of taking over the psyche. So according to Jung, it is not dreams as Freud believed. Oops. So according to Jung, it is not dreams as Freud believed, but complexes that provide the royal road to the unconscious. That comes from Jacobi's book. And then what is a complex? So according to... Um, there's a couple different theories. We kind of have the three main theories that developed in the early 1900s. We have the Freudian theory, we have the Jungian theory, and then we have Adlerian theory. Um, so in Freudian theory, a complex is a cluster of unconscious thoughts and emotions stemming from unresolved conflicts or childhood experiences. In Jungian theory, this is the idea um, that complexes are autonomous patterns of thoughts and feelings they're organized around specific themes emerging from the personal and collective unconscious and we're really going to be focusing on the union or the depth oriented way of thinking about complexes in this video and then there's also adlerian theory which is uh, really brought to the idea of the inferiority complex which is that in early childhood we tried to um, we had these feelings of infer inferiority in certain areas of our life and the rest of our life is basically a way to try and overcompensate for those specific feelings all these different theories uh, are in some way correct but the one we're really going to be focusing on is the Jungian theory um, so in Jungian theory uh, a feeling toned complex is an autonomous foreign body in the sphere of consciousness and so I just want to break that down real quick so autonomous meaning that it has its own will its own way of thinking that when a complex takes over the body uh, it's not our conscious will that is in control. And that's sort of the issue with complexes is they have to do with will. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about is that there's a foreign body that literally takes over the psyche of an individual. So some qualities of complexes. So one of the qualities that we just talked about is that they are autonomous. In Jacoby's book, he says that complexes may disclose every degree of independence. They have their own way of thinking. They have their own agenda. They have their own way of doing things inside of the psyche. Basically, they have a mind of their own. They are embedded in the unconscious. And so they're an intricate web of emotion, thought and feeling and their autonomous patterns of thoughts and feelings surrounding around specific themes. This leads us into the idea of the archetype. So archetypal mingling. So uh, for instance, a good way to picture this is if you can consider a man who experienced a rejection in maybe a romantic area of his life. Um, and then he has feelings of unworthiness that rise up in fear of intimacy. And so the archetypes that are invoked here are the lover, the rejected one, the protector. These are all archetypal images that mingle with the complex that is created. And the complexes rest on top of an image and they interweave within the archetypes themselves. A really awesome example of a complex is uh, multiple personalities. Um, so when somebody literally has access to two different personalities within themselves, um, and sometimes these personalities have interaction with each other, sometimes these personalities don't have information about the other personality. And this is how um, complexes can be viewed, is that they are literally separate, autonomous entities that exist inside of our psyche. Now that may sound a bit scary, and that's actually because it is, because the complexes do take over, and um, they can... Uh, run the show for a little bit. So many complexes are more subtle and they do not completely override all ego functioning. However, they absolutely can. An example of multiple personalities, that's an entire personality, an entire person existing inside of somebody's psyche that literally overrides and takes over. And then the other multiple personality, there may be more than just two, but the other multiple, the other personality may come online and be a part of 
um, that person's psyche for the time being as well. And so we can see that these aspects have their own will and they take over the psyche without the psyche's conscious awareness. A really great way to view uh, the a complex is like a button. So over on the left here, we have a bunch of people and this is sort of like the external world. Now something will happen in the external world and it will click a button inside of us. And when that button is clicked, all hell breaks loose. Something inside of us gets triggered and all of a sudden we're reacting in a particular way. This has different ideas and different names in different philosophical uh, and theoretical origins. For instance, in Buddhist philosophy, this is the idea of the Sankara or something that is triggered by the external world that causes us to behave in a particular way. So something happens in the external world, which then hits something inside of us. And then all of a sudden we react in a completely different way. So a really good way to tell if you even have a complex is uh, a couple of um, phrases that are commonly used. So um, someone might say to you, like, what's gotten into you? Um, getting quote unquote triggered, right? Like having that button pushed and all of a sudden there's something inside of us. Um, someone woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Uh, the devil made me do it. He has a chip on his shoulder or you are out of control. These are all examples of um, ways you can maybe determine whether or not there's a complex that is running the show. A complex is only bad when we do not know we have them. Complexes can also be referred to as demons. Um, that's a, another way to look at it in a different theoretical orientation. Uh, in psychology, we wouldn't refer to it as a demon. We would refer to it as a complex. But a complex is only bad when we do not know we have them. So basically the process here is to, to become conscious of what is happening inside of us and know when we're being taken over by complexes. So the father complex itself, which is the main focus of this video, this is um, from Jung the Man, which is an awesome uh, five part series on the internet if you wanna dive deeper into it. But in this particular piece, they said, in these moments, I would no longer be dealing with the actual man who reminded me of my father, but with the father Imago who lived within me. So we're gonna kind of get dive into what that means. So this whole idea of the father complex is that it is formed but there's also already an archetypal image of the father that exists inside of our psyche. So the archetypal image, which by the way, if you don't know much about archetypes, I created an entire video on that, which you can go check out. Um, and I'll link that above, but ar the archetypal image, which is sort of this baseline blueprint of what the father is already exists inside of all collective human psyches. And so that starts interacting with our actual father during our early childhood, whether or not we did or didn't even have a father. So, um, interaction with the actual father, whether he was present or not present, creates an emotional experience that interacts with this particular archetype. And then complexes are created through trauma. So something may have happened with our fathers, either uh, an abusive father or the absence of a father, or something could have happened just even within the relationship of the father. Robert Bly typically likes to talk about that. The way that he's, he describes it is that our father has a specific desire and a way of fathering, and we have a, a specific desire and a way of being fathered. And sometimes those don't line up. And when they don't line up, that's when the trauma is created. That's when a complex is created that when we want to receive love in a particular way and our father wants to give love in a different kind of way and it doesn't necessarily line up, um, we may receive trauma or a complex in that way. And if we didn't have a father, then that there's a giant gaping hole that gets filled in for what the father is. And the father becomes something that's scary, unknown, absent. In America right now, um, and these statistics are actually fairly common across many of the Western countries. I'm going to take a quick sip of my coffee here. Is the father absence crisis is currently occurring. So I spoke about this in another video, but I just want to bring it up because it's extremely important that one in four children with live without a biological step or adoptive father at home. So 25% of all children don't even have a father within the home. Um, and because of that, they're affected in the following ways, uh, you know, four times greater risk of poverty, more likely to have behavioral problems, two times more likely to suffer obesity, two times more likely to drop out of school. So currently we have, um, a quarter of our society is fatherless. And, uh, that means that a quarter of our society is basically running, um, 
with this absent father complex. And that's extremely important to understand because even if we had a father, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, we got what we needed from our father. And there's two specific forms of abandonment that come up when we talk about trauma. So there's actual physical abandonment, which means that the father is not there to be seen. And this may happen um, through a father leaving the family. It may even just happen with a father not being around during the day because he's at work all day. And we also have emotional abandonment of the father. So that means if our father was not able to connect with us on an emotional level, then we also experience abandonment. He may have a physical presence within the home, but because we didn't experience him emotionally, then we also feel abandonment. And there's an abandonment wound is that there as well. So a couple of things is that every child experiences both of these two events to some degree, even with a good father in the house. There's no such thing as a perfect father, no such thing as a perfect childhood. Even coming from a good family, we all experience some form of developmental trauma just because that's part of what it means to be human and to grow up in today's world. It's also known as CPTSD, um, complex uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, which is sort of this over time forming of trauma that occurs within the relationships in our households. Um, so even if we had stepfathers, didn't have a father, uh, had a father who did his best, who tried really hard to raise us, we're all going to experience some kind of difficult relationship with our father, some kind of tussle with him, some sort of physical abandonment or emotional abandonment of our fathers, or even in the opposite sense, maybe some emotional measurement where the father became a helicopter parent or way too clingy to the child as well. And this all this is just part of the human experience. Um, there's no such thing as a perfect father. So what ends up happening because of these forms of abandonment is that what is left inside is a gaping hole. The unknown remnants of the father are something to be uh, tussled with. There's something to be um, explored. So the unknown remnants of the father, um, there's something to be afraid of. Uh, because we don't know what's actually going on there. So the father complex teaches us how we relate to men. So that father complex, that button inside of us, whenever we have a man that we come in contact with in our lives, whether we're a man or a woman or non-binary, when we have someone who comes to us and triggers that complex inside of us, we learn how to relate to men in particular ways, whether or not it is true. So if we had a father who's extremely abusive and violent, we may have an embedded complex inside of us that says that whenever there's a man who triggers us in a particular way, that man must be abusive and violent, whether or not they may be actually true. Another common example of this is when um, you hear, for instance, women will say this a lot, but men will say this too, is that all men are blank. So fill in the blank. All men are pigs. All men are bad. All men are evil. Like, that's just not true. Um, there's a complex there that's taken over that has interacted with the image, with the archetypal image of the father, of the man, and is distorted in some way to the actual reality that is occurring. And we can actually see that the complex is trying to protect the person in some way, but may be dysfunctional. Complexes get us into relationships, a work, romantic friendship that resemble familiar situations to the father, certain authority figures in our life. We may feel that we're interacting with our father when we're interacting with our boss at work, when we're interacting with a romantic father. father. They may say something or do something that reminds us of our father and that triggers that father complex and all of a sudden we're that scared little child again um, seeking approval from our father. And even if the physical father dies or leaves, we may, we may still seek his approval. Just because the father has passed away or is no longer in our life, um, we still have that father complex inside of us. We may still be seeking approval from authorities or approval from our fathers or looking to fill that hole in a particular way through drugs, sex, gambling, um, random pursuits of workaholism or other means as well. So I also want to talk about um, like forming and triggering the complex so that we just get a good understanding of how this occurs. So this is just an example, but we'll go through these stages first. So how did our father treat us or not treat us is stage one. So we're this little child here and the way in which our father treated us or did not treat us creates the father image inside of us. This image is then constellated into the psyche where the archetype of the father already exists. When we go through life, something triggers us. Something happens inside of us that pushes that father complex button and an emotional surge happens inside of us and webs of feelings, thoughts, and emotions take over. And that's when the complex has taken over its own autonomous entity, takes over our consciousness. So an example of this is that we had a father figure who was not safe growing up. Understanding, so that means that understanding of the father 
and authority and man was recorded into the psyche as not safe or not something that we can't trust. So then out of nowhere in our life, when we're 30 years old, a male teacher creates an association of our father in the psyche. So we're working with a therapist or a teacher or a professor or a boss. And all of a sudden they act in a particular way that triggers that father complex inside of us. And then we unconsciously react in ways under the assumption that the teacher is not safe, regardless of whether or not the teacher is safe. So all of a sudden we start treating them like they are our father. Perhaps we start getting into like childlike states. Perhaps it's really difficult to ask for a raise because we don't want to make daddy angry or whatever that particular situation might be. This happens in romantic relationships as well. So we're trying to please our uh, parents inside of relationships because of these complexes. So as we can see that the imprint that our father left on us as a child then creates a an assumption that we make later in life based off of our surroundings. And that boss may or may not be safe, but that isn't the actual reality that's going on because we're looking through the world through the lens of the complex and not seeing this person as the actual individual that they are. So how do we heal the father complex? So in order to heal the father complex, there's a couple ways to go about this. We can enter into a therapeutic relationship with a father figure. We need men to teach us how to relate to other men, how to relate even if we're women or non-binary. We need men to teach us how to relate to men to then go back and rewire our original father complex. So if we had an abusive father or a father who wasn't there, we need to interact with somebody who is going to be there and who's safe for us to be around and somebody we can develop trust with so that we can test them against our own father complex and realize that if we act in particular ways that we did in childhood, maybe that would have had our father leave us. But now within the therapeutic context, we'll act in particular ways and we'll recognize and start healing that father complex because we see that um, the therapist is not acting as who we thought they're supposed to act as as a man and we'll actually try and fit people into our complexes um, in a particular way and when they don't fit into those that's when we have a rupture that's when something breaks inside of us and so um, an awesome ways to enter in a therapeutic relationship with the father figure this also means um, spending time around safe and caring men um, going on retreats um, finding particular groups, maybe 12 step recovery, finding different ways that we can be around people who are working on themselves and realize, and, and especially men who are emotionally vulnerable and available to experience a sense of openness. Um, being around that is extremely he healing. On, on several retreats that I've been in, that I lead, having men and women interact together in a vulnerable way really helps to open up that father complex because, uh, especially for women who have been hurt by men, they get to see men emotional and crying and there have been many women who have never experienced the safe man in their life and same thing with men as well and so being able to see men who are open and vulnerable and crying and doing the work and healing um, allows for the reconstruction of the complex inside of us to recognize that the reality we thought was there just isn't true and then we can also heal the father complex by entering into intimate friendships or relationships um, an intimate meaning, you know, that cheesy line of into me, I see intimacy into me, I see allowing men into our heart space, allowing men into our hearts and in opening up and learning how to love other men um, and doing so either in romantic relationships or intimate friendships or um, allowing ourselves to really uh, learn to trust and be around men in our life. Um, and so, like I mentioned, we're, we're challenging these base assumptions of what we thought a man was supposed to be. So we're pulling back the projections because when we enter into relationship with somebody, whether romantic or friendship, we project a whole lot of baggage onto them. And then afterwards, it's our job to stop, start pulling back the projections and start integrating back into the psyche what um, we had been projecting on these individuals, especially through the complex. And so Robert Bly here has an awesome quote that I... I, I want to speak into this space, which is that when a father absent during the day returns home at six, his children receive his temperament, not his teaching. And this is extremely fundamental to understand because in our society today, a lot of men uh, work, a lot of fathers work nine to five jobs or are working most of the day, not around their children. And this wasn't always the case. Um, to our ancestors, children worked with their fathers, especially young boys. Young boys worked with their fathers and they got to learn from him. So not only did they get to experience his temperament, which we still get to experience today, of like the anger of coming home from a long day of work, they also got to receive his teaching. 
which is the father's skill, that the father was able to relay the skill and the emotional way of being in the world to the child just by being around the father, which is something that we don't have today. And that's why we have a lot of lost young men and young boys running around and a lot of young women and girls as well um, who do not have that sense of direction because we haven't learned how to relate with the father because the father wasn't there. So with that, thank you so much for tuning in. If you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing, I put a lot of time into making these videos for your entertainment. Um, if you would like to work on your own father complex or uh, do any shadow work or dream work, um, you can reach me by clicking the link in the description below and setting up a free call and we can discover if working together would be a valid option or not. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Thank you.